a big tip is at some point, spend a little bit of money and automate what you can because you will find out very quickly your time uh, gets drained faster than you expect. This is The Entrepreneur Way with Neil Ball. Unlocking the secrets of successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball. Napoleon Hill said the power of the mastermind is the driving force. To discover how you can unlock the potential in your business using the power of a mastermind, go to mastermindunlimited.com. And now, here is your host, Neil Ball. Hello, it's Neil Ball. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Entrepreneur Way. The Entrepreneur Way is about the entrepreneur's journey, the vision, the mindset, the commitment, the sacrifice, failures and successes. I'm so excited to bring you our special guest today, Adam Greenbaum. But before I introduce you to him, I have a little quote for you. Gina Gershon said, My best attribute is knowing when not to answer stupid questions. The Entrepreneur Way asks the questions so we all get the insights, inspiration and ideas to apply in our businesses. Adam, welcome to the show. Are you ready to share your version of the Entrepreneur Way with us? Hey, Neil. Thanks for having me. I'm absolutely ready. Oh, great. Thanks for coming on the show, Adam. Adam Greenbaum is the CEO of Greenbaum Digital and iBostonTerrier.com. He is an award winner, public speaker, entrepreneur and loving father to two Boston Terriers. Adam, can you provide us with some more insight into your business and personal life to allow us to get to know more about what you do and who you are? Yeah, absolutely. I, we're located here in Denver, Colorado, which is uh, a booming city here in the States and uh, more importantly in the tech world. Um, I, uh, before I started my company, which is an advertising agency, I was the head of digital analytics and strategy for LasVegas.com. I was the head of marketing for a national healthcare organization. I was the head of marketing for a, another big startup that's been doing a lot of fundraising in San Francisco, working with 500 startups. And, uh, you know, much like most of the people on this show or most of your listeners, uh, I am a very bad nine to five, sit at a desk, go to meetings all day type of person. And it was finally time to start my own thing. And, and, uh, so far so good. I, I feel like my sort of laid back fun loving personality has rubbed off on our employees, on our culture, on our clients. And uh, I, I think that's why a lot of companies want to work with green bomb digital. We're a full service advertising agency. We, uh, we employ a lot of different growth hacking techniques and, you know, a lot of social media stuff and a lot of um, interesting advertising techniques and remarketing techniques that not a lot of people do. And, uh, you know, uh, sort of our aim is, you know, you could go hire a me and three or four other people at your company and pay, you know, have a marketing department for two hundred thousand, hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a year in salaries. Plus, don't forget about benefits and, and managing people and all, all those type of things. Or you can outsource it to a group of professionals uh, who want to work on your stuff and do good work for you, but don't necessarily want to sit with you for 40 hours a week and sit in meetings with you uh, eight hours a day. So it's a, it's a cool concept. We've got some amazing, amazing clients, and it's been a lot of fun so far. Mm -hmm. And what do you enjoy most about what you do, Adam? Well, I, uh, I've been uh, doing internet marketing since I was a teenager. I even, I, I remember I was a teenager first getting into building websites and I built a football website that got so big that the NFL sued me. And, uh, I, I guess that's when I knew, oh, okay, I, I obviously know what I'm doing in this space, but you know, it's, you know, for me, it's nice. Like I told you, I, I'm not a nine to five sit at a company and, and, uh, you know, sort of work on one thing all day. I'm very much the, I like to jump around. I like to be active. I like to wake up and take my dogs for a long walk with some hot tea and do that for an hour, go work for two hours and then go to the gym for an hour and then, you know, go do a meeting with a client at a coffee shop. So it's been fun. It's very, uh, 
we we're, you know we call ourselves the unagency, which has gotten us a lot of press. But I, I really feel like that's what we are, and I feel like that's what people like about us is we're not a boardroom full of people wearing suits and showing you powerpoints and boring you out of your mind. We we sit here with our laptop open and show you analytics and show you your marketing campaigns and how it's being tracked and how it's working and why we did it that way and and how we're retargeting people and things like that. So it's just it's just been a wild ride these first few months and uh, the future is bright. Mm, I like that phrase, the unagency. That's a, a nice phrase. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it that drives you? You know what? You know what? It's it's. I've been told this is my this is an awful response. This is the third time someone's asked me that. You know what drives me is uh, being able to spend time with friends and family. Being able to spend time with my dogs. Um, I own iBoss Interiors, you said, Mm -hmm. which is a a national dog rescue site that I've been running for five or six years now. And, uh, you know, we reach 675,000 people a month. We help thousands of dogs in need. And uh, uh, me sort of succeeding in life and my company's doing better has given me the ability to donate more time to that, more money to that to help dogs in need and uh, sort of give me some freedom to go help and be some part of those charitable events when I can. So, you know, all of those things, the, the free time, the lifestyle, and uh, sort of being able to do more uh, for, the, for the community that doesn't have as much as the rest of us is what continues to push me. Mm-hmm. And how do you relax when you're not working in your business? <laughs> you know, I just want to make sure every person listening knows this. I'm, we're not even a year in yet. There's not a lot of time to relax, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish there was. Um, I, uh, I, even, I think I sent a tweet out this morning that said, uh, life as a business o- owner is waking up every morning and saying, what now? Because I feel like every morning there's an email. My website's broken. This is, you know, I mean, that's just life and that's the digital world. But, uh, you know, when we relax, I... Uh, you know, I love photography. I love hiking. Um, we, we like to travel a lot. So we have four or five trips booked this year. We're going to be going to Florida. We're going to be trying to go to Hawaii. I'm speaking at a couple conferences, one on the East Coast, one in Scottsdale, Arizona. So it's, you know, for us, it's nice to get away and and uh, go, go see places we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. And do you have any entrepreneurial role models? You know, what's funny is... I mean, I, uh, I've worked with a lot of people who, mm-hmm. you know, maybe not necessarily were entrepreneurial role models, but people who kind of uh, inspire you to be the best at what you're doing. Um, you know, one thing I've always had when I say I'm not a good nine to five person, it's very true. And I feel like the sort of the culture of the workplace has changed. And it's, uh, it's not a, a culture that I'm, I love. It's, Go to this meeting. Go to that meeting. Every 30 days, we're going to do a one-on-one to talk about this. You know, manage these people. You have to write this report. You know, and you get 900 emails a day. And and I've never loved that lifestyle that, you know, sit at your desk for 45 hours a week and whoever sits at their desk the most is the best employee, not the person who does the best work. So, I've you know, I've had people in my life that have really inspired me to um, focus more on just being great, getting great work done, whether you do it in two hours or 10 hours. And you know what, as long as you have results, then everything should be great. And I even say that to our employees. It's I I don't really care if you work 40 hours a week, or I don't care if you work 10 hours a week, as long as you have your list and you're doing good things and it's quality and our clients are happy, go skiing, take four days off. If you're done, you're done. And that's sort of the culture we have around here. And so far, so good. Wow. That's a and that works quite well, does it, working like that? You know what? I think it does. And you know what? Even for me, it, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I do a lot of writing online. And uh, I just wrote an article that's not published yet. I'll, I'll give you all a sneak peek. But I, I wrote an article that said the, uh, the most important hour of your day is the night before. Um, most important hour of your day is the night before. Yep. And uh, basically what I mean by that is every night, you know, 9 30, 10 o'clock as we're getting ready for bed and kind of winding down, I pull up my to-do list and I pull up the, you know, our, the things that are promised to our clients. And I try to just, I give myself an hour every night and I actually set a timer on my phone and I go through and knock out as much as I can. And it's kind of interesting when you sort of add some gamification to your life that way and see how much you can get done in that hour while obviously still trying to keep quality Um, and it's really nice because then the next morning you wake up and you look at your to-do list and it's, 
20, 15, 20, 30% smaller than it was the day before kind of allows you to wake up and uh, enjoy your day, get settled and get going in. And I, and I tell our employees to do the same thing. It's, you know, hey, if, if you have these three things and they're due Friday and it's Tuesday night and you can knock out one or two of them, then guess what? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is going to be a pretty nice week for you. Um, for me, hey, I don't care what you guys do with your time. You got those three things done for me. The clients are happy. I'm happy. Great. Go live your life. And uh, so far, I think it's worked well for us. Mm. It's an interesting, interesting way of running your business. I, I, well, I've not come across anyone who said that before. That just sounds awesome if you can get it to work. You know, that was my goal being on your show today was to get you to say no one's ever said that before. Was it really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had a feeling that would happen at least two or three times. So I'm not. I'm very unconventional. So I've got two I'm more coming. Over. <laughs> there's, there's two more coming up, is there? Probably, I never know. <laughs> Adam, can we talk about the time before you were an entrepreneur? Yeah. What difficulties did you have to overcome when you started your business? Uh, you know, I think a lot of it's mental. I think it's uh, you sort of build these barriers up in your mind of how you think things should go and uh, how you want them to go. And uh, sometimes you have to take the bad with the good. We, uh, we actually landed in our first few months, we landed uh, an Inc. 5000 company. So think about it. Here we are starting a new agency, this boutique agency. And at the time, it was me and one other person. And we're out there. You know, I'm selling myself. I'm going to networking events. And, and, and we meet these guys. And I'm not going to give their name. And, uh, and they sign with us. And that was huge. That was the moment that made me say, hey, we can do this. And... Uh, but, you know, there's a, there's a lot of meetings where you go meet and you shake hands and you say, great, we're looking forward to meeting with you. And, you know, two days later, it's, hey, you know, we decided to go in another direction or, hey, we just don't think we have the budget for this. And even more recently, we had someone actually sign a contract and a day later say, hey, can we, you know, can we please back out of this? And um, we're sorry, but we have interns and we don't pay them and we think they can do marketing for free for us, which, you know, um, that's life. And I think if you're able to sort of mentally stay positive, get past those hurdles that come along the way and, and keep just celebrating the big wins, I'm really big on celebrating any type of win, big or small, whether we get a client in Inc. Magazine, Forbes Magazine, or we get a client in their local paper with a great photo and write up, let's celebrate every win. And I think that's really helped with the culture between us and our clients is – Hey, we're always positive. We're always happy. We're always moving forward. And did you have any doubts that delayed you starting your business? You know, I, uh, I, again, I think a lot of it was mental. You know, you're sitting there. Um, when I had first started, we had, a we had sort of this half-assed website and, uh, you know, it just, it was like, hey, am I going to do this? And, uh, I, I, I had seen this quote. This is not my favorite quote, but I had seen a quote about um, sometimes you just need to jump and trust that the net will be there. And uh, I kind of liked that. And I re- read an article about uh, basically said you'll never succeed as long as there's a safety boat. You have to burn the boat. I really wish I remembered the uh, – it was another entrepreneur who wrote it. And it was really great because here I was as the head of digital and basically head of marketing at a pretty big startup here in Denver and wasn't very happy – um, and was, had my finger on the button to start the company, but I was just terrified. You know, I, I've got, you know, I've got a girlfriend, we've got three pets, we've got, you know, this family and, you know, I sort of support everything. And, you know, what happens if I leave my job, start this and we do not sign any new clients. Um, I'm going to be in big trouble here. So it worked out where we ended up signing six clients in the first 30 days and, and it sort of was like, whew. but you know, there's all, I, I think a lot of things that entrepreneurs need to think about is just stay out of your own head, just be positive, trust yourself. And just, you can't go at it 80%. You have to go hundred percent you have to jump and just trust that the net's there. Mm-hmm. That's good advice. And what mistakes did you make that slowed your journey? Yeah, I, uh, you know, it's funny. I've, I've worked at two advertising agencies before uh, previously. And, uh, the one thing I always learned was no matter what, 
you're the bad guy. You you are not an internal employee. You are sort of the you're this outside person that they're paying and you know when they sign up in the first 10 days if they don't have record sales you're the worst you suck and and I think early on I was so ambitious and so driven and so psyched that there was a lot of overpromising and and not a lot of great communication on my part and through good and bad communication and you know in such a short time over 8 or 9 months I've changed sort of the communication paths between our clients and myself as the CEO, uh, our, our clients and the people on my team. And I think we've set realistic expectations and goals. And, and I think that's what's really helped. And what's, what's great about that is when we consistently beat and, you know, beat those expectations and, you know, they say, Hey, we want to, we want to sell X this month and we beat it. Then all of a sudden, uh, there's a much better relationship than saying, yeah, I think we can do blank. And then if you, you know, even if you're 10 pe- 10% below blank, but blank was their highest month ever, it doesn't matter. So I would say, you know, my communication skills with clients and partners has probably had to something I've worked very hard on developing over the last few months and so far so good. Mm-hmm. And what are some of the things that you did before you started your business that'd be helpful tips to some of the listeners who haven't yet taken the first step on the entrepreneur way? Yeah, well, tap in your networks. Um, you know, I happen to have 40 or 50,000 social media followers. And, you know, the first thing I did was I went and talked to people I've worked with, people I've trusted, people that know people and just said, hey, here's what I'm thinking about doing. What are your thoughts? Here's here's how we're launching. You know, have a, obviously have a good plan to show off, and um, you know that was one of the first big things I did was I, I I was hoping someone would say, "Hey, you're crazy," which probably would have pushed me to go harder. But you know, it's uh, it's really nice to tap into your network because people are going to see see things and say things that you may not be able to see because you're so close to the project. You know, do that. Check, you know, think of different names that are going to resonate with the crowd. Check if there's any other companies out there with the same name. When you register your sites and your domains, no matter if you're selling services or a product, um, find, be so unique that, you know, that you're not going to get lost in the minutia of the gigantic world that is the internet. Um, do your research. Make sure that all of the social pages with your name are, are available. Make sure domains are available. Make sure, you know, any subdomains are available. So go in, be unique, and sort of get your ducks in a row digitally. That's the world we live in now. Maybe I'm a little biased having being the CEO of a digital marketing agency. But a lot of things I tell companies is uh, you have to be diligent before you launch. So when you launch, you're minimizing risk. Mm. I think one thing you've just said there that's interesting, and I think it's something people can do, is that even if you've not got a business idea, you can start working on building up the following on social media for when you do have, because obviously when you launch then you can actually tell quite a lot of people about what you're doing so it's probably quite a good idea to do that which obviously worked for you adam adam can we talk about the entrepreneurial journey a little bit and so, so, do you think culture is important from the beginning in a business i do and uh, i think it sort of changes over time i think you need to set boundaries those boundaries will get broken whether you like it or not and you know sort of with with even my sort of laid back way of doing things, you can tell people, Hey, as long as these three things are done by Friday, um, I don't care what you do, but then guess what happens? Friday comes, they went skiing Thursday and Friday and you didn't get your thing. And all of a sudden it's, Hey, what's the deal? So, and I think it's the same with, you know, whether you're selling a product and working directly with customers, whether you're selling services and working with clients like us, I think that culture is a big thing. I think it, uh, I mean, it's like anything. I'm a, I'm a huge sports fan. I'm also a big Denver Broncos fan. So it's been a good couple of weeks for me. But here you have an organization with, uh, with an owner who has made the Super Bowl more times than he's had a losing season um, mm-hmm. in his career. And what does that mean? That means you've got a man at the top who puts the right people in place, who brings in the right kind of people, and uh, me being a sports fan, you'll, you'll probably hear me make some uh, other sort of uh, comparisons to sports. But, you know, I, I've always loved the way the Broncos do business. And being a fan, I've sort of modeled myself after that as if I at the top uh, can set sort of the precedent of how things are going to run and how we're going to act and how we're going to react to things that should trickle down in a way 
that works. And, you know, I, I hope the number one thing anyone that works for us or with us sees is how passionate I am and how much I like to push myself and hustle because hopefully that rubs off on everybody. Mm-hmm. You mentioned at the beginning how you've got this, uh, a different approach to how you employ people. And I just wondered how do you, I mean, I can understand the concept of, of paying people for delivering the results effectively. I think that's what you, you said, or you, was, you were implying from what you were saying, or it's how I understood it. But how do you manage people in that kind of environment? Because there's a, you, you could potentially be, people could take advantage of that kind of situation, couldn't they, potentially? Well, yeah, and I and I get that. And, you know, even mentally, I say, hey, I haven't heard from them in two days. But it's, you know, a lot of the things we do, I, I made the decision when we were starting, this is probably a good tip for a lot of people as well. It's where do you want to invest your money? So the, obviously, it was just me for the first 90 days. And I, I had sort of set these goals that once we have X amount, I didn't, it wasn't even paying myself. So it was 90 days in, once we've received X amount of money sitting in the bank, and we've got X amount of clients signed and, and like future money signed, I will then hire people. So the first thing I did was I brought in uh, an art director because, trust me, and <laughs> I really mean this, and in my dreams, I would have brought in an account manager who would email and be on emails all day because being an entrepreneur means, uh, apparently I didn't know this ahead of time, it means responding to 900 emails a day. <laughs> so in a perfect world, I would have brought that person in but I felt that spending my money on an art director was uh, a more valuable uh, sort of investment for our company. The second person I brought in was a developer. Again, as, as we've grown, so is my email inbox at all hours of the day. And, uh, but, you know, the developer does, you know, they do things I can't do. And the, and the third person we brought in is we ended up bringing in content people. So to this day, I've only brought in people – and invest in people who are sure doing big projects for us. So we don't really have the account managers or the interns or coordinators sort of sending emails and, and needing me to stand over them all day. We've got these very high level people who are just sort of working on uh, larger scale projects as we move forward. So it's, Hey, we're, we're launching this new website. So art director, you have all the art done programmer you have everything ready and as long as everything's done by you know we tell the client it'll be done march 1st if it's done march 1st i'm happy if it's done the week before march 1st i'm even more happy so that's sort of i haven't had to spend too much of my days sort of managing people looking over their shoulders just because it's probably not the best use of my time and i'd rather invest my money in these awesome amazing specialized people who can do bigger and better things Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Knowing what you know now, is there anything that, if you'd known it when you started out, would have helped you to shortcut the learning curve? Um, yeah, I would. I would say probably just creating better automated processes, whether it's you know our sales funnel as we bring in new clients, or sort of the way we manage things. You know, you know, over time, um, the moment you change your 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 title on social media to CEO, you will immediately be sold uh, thousands of times by thousands of software companies every day, which is fine because guess what? We have those same ads running for Green Bomb Digital selling you our services. So um, that's how that goes. Uh, but, you know, over time we've, we've sort of, I've, I've found ways to automate processes, automate our sales process, automate our email processes and uh, it saves so much time. I was just doing so much stuff manually for the first 90 days, whether it was pay, I mean, payroll was the big one. Um, Managing how people paid us, how we invoiced them. And, you know, eventually you make the decision, I'm going to invest in this software. It's going to automatically invoice them. That invoice is going to automatically go into our company account and then payroll will be automatically sent to the employees. And that was a big one that was taking up time. So, I will say the a big tip is at some point spend a little, little bit of money and automate what you can because you will find out very quickly your time uh, gets drained faster than you expect. Mm, that's a good advice there. And how much does gut feeling influence your decisions in your business? <laughs> I, uh, I sort of, I'm the type of person, this might be number two that you've never heard of. I sort of do a lot of things by gut feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I will say, and I don't know if this has been a good thing or a bad thing, but we probably meet with 
10 to 15 potential new clients a month and we turn away 80% of them. And that's mostly because of my gut feelings. And, uh, you know, when, when you're hiring people, I, you know, obviously I'm sure you could tell by this interview, I'm not the type that sits down and says, you know, tell me how you resolved a workplace conflict and questions like that. I'm obviously asking a little bit more in-depth questions and uh, trying to get to know people. But yeah, I mean, I think as you jump forward, you're going to have to take risks and uh, just trust your gut and uh, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to jump and take the big risks because that's where the biggest rewards come. But, you know, if, if you've got a bad feeling about something, walk away. It's just not worth it. Trust me, we've had two instances um, that are probably hour long stories themselves that both times I should have trusted my gut feeling and walked away. Mm. Adam, life is made of constant change, whether we like it or not. And some would say the only constant in life is change. How do you try to keep up with change? Oh, I, I, I love change. Change is like my middle name, believe it or not. I, uh, I've had five addresses in five years, <laughs> moving from Las Vegas, Nevada to Denver, Colorado. And, uh, I, you know, even, even us, we've had three offices at Greenbaum Digital, sort of as we've grown and as our needs have changed, we've moved around a lot. So I think change is good. I think cycling things, you know, cycling through things is great. And I think change th- keeps things exciting and new. Um, you know, if there was no change, Apple wouldn't be Apple. Every year they have to sort of innovate and change something. Otherwise, we're not all going to buy another MacBook or another iPhone. They have to change things. They have to develop watches that, you know, that pair with your phone and that track your health statistics. So I think change is great as long as you're uh, able to manage and keep up with it and not get left behind. And how do you keep up with it? Yeah. Well, in our industry, you know, we do digital marketing and, and whether it's Google's algorithms or, you know, Twitter's, you know, Twitter's about to launch a new timeline that's supposedly going to benefit advertisers. I mean, those are the things that we have to stay on top of. Even things as, as small as Instagram allowing you to have multiple accounts on one account now, um, sort of changed the way we manage our Instagram accounts for clients because it, it was, uh, it was taking up so much time for our team and now it's now it's sort of an automated process. So, you know, the digital world, things change quick. Uh, clients change quick. Their needs change quick. And uh, for me, I probably can't speak for all of my employees because they might hate it. Uh, oftentimes we're in the services business. Clients want this and then the next day they want that. For me, it keeps it interesting and fun. For everyone else, it's crazy. But I sort of like, the, like that sort of chaos, I guess. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite book on entrepreneurialism, business, personal development, leadership, or motivation? And can you tell us why you have chosen it? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I mean, we're going back five or six years here. I, uh, I used to have really bad anger issues, and I, I would get frustrated. And if I was that person, I would not have been able to be in the position I am today. And um, I just had, I think it was a lot of communication issues. And I had read this book named uh, The Power of Habits, Why We Do What We Do in Life and Business by Charles Duhigg. And uh, it was a New York Times bestseller. And it really changed the way I, uh, I, I mean, I see and do everything. It's about how habits are formed from the day we're born. When you walk, your brain is not saying left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. Your brain, as you've learned to walk, has memorized and created a habit of those impulses. So now you can tweet while you walk without thinking left foot, right foot, tweet, and all of those things. So, you know, the power of habit, I mean, they talk about, you know, in the boardroom of Procter & Gamble, they're on the sidelines for NFL teams. They, uh, I think they had a, a whole uh, chapter on Starbucks and how they empower their employees. I mean, it takes you from individual people to companies to coaches and how everything we do is uh, sort of a habit that we've built and how you manage those habits. And, uh, you know, they talk about how you have these triggers. So for me, it was, I would get frustrated. I would get upset. I would, you know, I would feel slighted and it would cause anger or it would cause frustration. And, and maybe I overcomplicated because now I'm, you know, now I'm the most laid back person ever, which, you know, go find someone who knew me six years ago, who hasn't seen me in six years and tell them I'm laid back and you'll, you'll probably laugh at their response, but (laughs) you know, so, uh, yeah, the power of habit by Charles Duhigg is probably, uh, the best book I've ever read. Everyone, when you have a busy life, listening to audio books is a great way to expand your knowledge in the time when you may be doing other things such as driving or when you're at the gym. We have a special offer for you of a free audio book of your choosing. 
To choose your free audiobook, go to www.freeaudiobookoffer.com. As long as you've not already signed up, then you will qualify. Adam, what I'd like to do now is speculate about a few things about the future with you. What one thing would you do with your business if you knew that you could not fail? I knew that I could not fail. Well, let's see here. I would uh, I'd probably open a satellite office in Maui. And because uh, why not? I mean, if you want a beach view in Hawaii, that'd be great. Um, but if we could not fail, I would probably, I probably take more risks in our marketing. The the in you know something for clients. The thing we've been able to do uh, for our agency is we had ads that went to people who own small businesses and says your website sucks, call us, and it worked. Um, and you know, we've been able to sort of have those fun messagings. We used rap lyrics in one of the ads for our agency and, and sort of our growth has come because we've had, you know, sort of that free spirited, I mean, we're the unagency. We're not this, you know, politically correct agency. I mean, we get our clients a lot of uh, press and it's me on the phone with reporters saying, this is one badass product. And they say, you know, well, we also want to write about this one. And I say, ah, don't worry about that one. This is the best one. And, you know, I think the world needs a little bit more of that sometimes. You know, sometimes you have a product and you just want to like, you know, like what Old Spice is doing or what Taco Bell is doing. Sometimes you want to have a, a shark with a laser punching a man in the face. And and I think if, if, if you know, if the, the rules were all taken away and we could sort of do marketing, if we could launch the campaigns that we joke about, at lunch in our boardroom as we're laughing and, you know, the things we talk about, we go grab a beer after work and sort of, Hey, wouldn't it be funny if we could do this? Or wouldn't it be great if we could do this? If we could just do it, I think it would, I think it would change marketing. It's just, you know, if you're not old spice or Taco Bell and you have smaller brands, like some of the brands, you know, we've got a couple national brands, but we also have a lot of local and I, I just don't always know how those things are received. And what skill, if you were excellent at it, would help you the most to double your business? Uh, probably the paperwork side and the, uh, you know, those type of things. If I was better at, you know, I, I'm a numbers guy. Uh, my background's in analytics. So I look at our numbers. I look at our payables, what's coming in, things like that. But I think if I was, if I was better at um, probably building out processes and uh, probably having a little bit better of a funnel, and I guess maybe that's because we haven't needed that, you know, just from word of mouth, our advertising and some of the press we've gotten, we have sort of that steady funnel of new clients calling us every other day, every day. And, um, but I, you know, eventually at some point that has to get better. And I probably would need to be better at building out processes for bringing in new business, executing and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. In five years from now, if a well-known business publication was publishing an article on your business after talking to your customers and suppliers, what would you like it to say? I would like it to say something. Uh, I mean, I would like it to say, you know, the unagency model worked. Um, you know, here we are. I've had, we have three clients. We're here in Denver. We have three local clients. We've got more than three local clients, but we've had three of them here in Denver meet with two other agencies. So same three said the exact same thing about one of the agencies. They said, you know, they brought us there. They had 10 people sitting in a boardroom. Everyone was wearing suits. They had a PowerPoint. They said they were intimidated. They were scared. They just wanted to get out of there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and they said then they came to meet me. Most times I take people out to dinner, and we have, we have some food. We have a beer. We laugh, and we talk, and we talk about their goals. I show them what I'm thinking we do. We, we do you know, free consultations for everyone. I kind of go through their website, go through their analytics, go through their social feeds, and say, hey, this looks great. That looks awful. This looks great. That looks awful. Here's what we want to do, blah, blah, blah. Here's my first thoughts. And you know what? I think people can relate to that. I think they like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a business model. I'm obviously not some innovator. I'm not the first guy who's thought that way when starting a business. But I think for an advertising agency, it's a different way of thinking. I think they want to portray that they're fun. The two that I worked at, uh, we're very good at portraying. We're very fun. It's great to it's great to work here. It's very exciting, and we have cotton candy. And we've got beer in the fridge and things like that. But I mean, if you can really be you and be yourself with your clients and potential clients, and not be the fake "I'm trying to sell you something" version, 
I think that'll really work well. And five years from now, if, if we're, and I know we will be continuing our success, I think that's what would be written. Great answer. We're now at the part of the show where you share three golden nuggets with us. Adam, what is your favorite quote and how have you applied it? Yeah, I, uh, I'm an, I've never not owned an Apple computer. So I've been told I'm a lot like Steve Jobs, but obviously I don't scream and curse at people and do that stuff. But he had a quote that I love, mm -hmm. and it was, be a yardstick of quality. Some people aren't used to an environment where excellence is expected. And, and I'll tell you this, in my, in my years working, I don't know if I was ever at a job where it was more important to do the best work than it was to be there the longest or be the person who was in an hour early and out an hour late. And I just, that is just not my personality. I, you know, I want to be somewhere where it's, you just did an awesome job, great work. And that's what I tell our employees. It's that was badass. The client is so happy. I'm so happy. You got it done two days early. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, I love that quote because I don't think a lot of a lot of companies, I think it gets stale and excellence is not expected. And that's the one thing that will always remain constant at Green Bomb Digitals. Do what you want and manage your schedule. Just you better do damn good work. Mm -hmm. And do you have any favorite online resources that you can share with us? Well, obviously, Green Bomb Digital blog is great. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, you know, all of our growth hacking tips, but you know, we, uh, I mean, we're, we're on all of them. We read, you know, Inc, Forbes, Tech Cocktail. I write for Inc and Tech Cocktail. Um, Mashable, Social Media Examiner. I mean, these are all just great sites. But you know what's funny is everyone sort of has their own. And uh, I mean, you know, the best thing I could tell people to do is not many people know this. Go to blog.instagram.com, blog.twitter.com. They are literally giving you updates to things the moment they happen. So when you when you read that, hey, Facebook has this brand new feature. Guess what? Yesterday it was on their Facebook blog. They put it there. Or Instagram is now allowing multiple account logins or Twitter's new timelines going live, which is going to benefit advertisers. They announced that the day before. So, um, you know, definitely keep an eye on those. Watch those. It's great to pull stati statistics and insights. And of course, the Green Bomb Digital blogs full of all your favorite growth hacking methods and all of those fun things. So. Mm -hmm. We got, a, we got a bunch of smart people writing a lot for that. So Awesome. And what is your best advice to other entrepreneurs? My best advice, and it's funny because I, you know, I was talking a little bit about this earlier. It's every day is a mental, it's a mental battle for you. It is, um, especially if you're new and this is the first time you've done it. And, uh, I mean, I sent out the tweet this morning that said, uh, you know, every day is like saying what's next. And a guy sent me a tweet and he said, uh, his exact words, I envy people who have the fire in them to do this. I don't. And I'm honest with myself about it. So I work for the man. And that was honestly, I read that and I really liked it because it, it, you, it is not easy. You know, it's fun and it's exciting, but I'll tell you, every day is a struggle. Every day something happens and every day you have to make a quick decision on something that's going to affect the future of your business. And, and you have to really, you know, I've resorted to 5 a.m. in the hot tub with tea, walking my dogs and like, you know, my first 90 minutes of my day are spent doing that so that I am so mentally relaxed and prepared when things, you know, when, you know, this happens or that happens and, you know, we've got so, you know, API calls for clients' websites or e-commerce sites go down or, you know, all of these little things that happen in the tech world on a daily basis and, you know, issues with employees, issues with your employees and the way they're dealing with clients or customers. I mean, there's always something every day and just be mentally ready and strong to stay calm and prepare for anything. Everyone, if you didn't manage to get a note of Adam's favorite resource or his favorite book, you can find the links on Adam's show notes page. Just go to theentrepreneurway.com and search for Adam or Adam Greenbaum in the search box. Adam, is there anything else that you'd like to add about your business? You know, we, uh, we're we just uh, we're a full-service marketing agency. Obviously, we do things different. We, uh, we don't do PowerPoints like everyone else. We actually show you. I will literally, whether if you're next to me, I'll pull up my laptop. Or if, you're, you know, if you're across the country or we have a client in Germany, I will screen share with you, and I show you our analytics, what we're seeing, and how we do it. 
Uh, a lot of companies fudge their numbers they or they don't provide numbers at all. Everything we do is analytics-based. So if if you're not doing good, we know there's a reason and we fix it pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're a, we're a fun-loving bunch here in Denver and uh, we're growing every day. So it's been exciting. Adam, it's been an absolute honor having you on the show, hearing about your philosophies on business and life and your unagency and everything. So thank you very much for coming on here. Thanks, Neil. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to uh, telling everyone about the show and I'll make sure uh, that everyone listens. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Entrepreneur Way. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball.